Vintage large drainage fittings. Let's start with the Scrinol Durham fitting. Durham fittings are threaded cast iron organized fittings used on drainage and vent lines. What makes them important is that they have what is known as a recessed hub. When you screw the pipe in all the way, it'll touch the back edge of the hub, not allowing there to be an extra lip or cells can collect. Normal pressure fittings don't have a recessed hub, so when you screw the pipe in, there will be a lip that will allow solids to build inside the fitting and clog it. That's why these pressure fittings are only allowed on pressure and venting applications. Now this elbow accepts 5 inch threaded pipe. Here's a 3 by 5 inch bushing, and you can see that you can screw it into the elbow. Now 5 inch for Durham fittings is actually a really large size. The largest size they make them in nowadays is 4 inch, and those fittings are around $300 to $400. But back when this fitting was made, you could get Durham fittings up to 10 inch. And those must have been really hard to tighten, especially if you had a really large fitting like a Y. Now I use a lot of inch and a half and two inch Durham fittings for things like modifying a trap bar. Let's say I have a galvanized nipple coming out of the wall and I want to come out at a 45 degree angle. I would screw this Durham elbow on and then it would attach whatever I want to on the other end because you never want to screw PVC onto galvanized or it could crack. Now this small inch and a half elbow even has its own recessed hub. Now this elbow is a 22 and a half degree elbow. You can see right there has that marking. And this would allow you to change the angle of a pipe to 22 and a half degrees. If you screw this end on a pipe, you then come out at that angle. Now that is very helpful if you need to make an offset. You'd screw one elbow on, a pipe, another elbow on, and then you could connect two misaligned pipes. Now right here, there's this G, and that G is a marking Grinnell used up to around 2000 when they got renamed Anvil. When they got renamed Anvil, they started using an Anvil as their marking. Now Anvil makes a lot of the old Grinnell products, and they even make Durham fittings, but they no longer make these larger ones. There is another Grinnell as a part of Johnson Controls, but they only make fittings for fire protection systems. Now this fitting is extremely heavy, it's probably 10, 15 pounds, and the wall of the hub is probably about an inch thick. Where this truss is, the fitting's probably about an inch and a half, two inches thick, and then the wall of the fitting is probably about a half inch thick. So this is a really heavy fitting. Now the next fitting is what is known as a fiber pipe fitting. Fiber pipe is also called Orangeburg pipe and it was used from 1860 to around the 1970s. And the problem with it was, is that it would soften and it would collapse because it was made out of tar and wood fiber. Now this specific fitting was made by Bermaco and they're a very popular manufacturer of this fiber pipe. Orangeburg was a little bit more common. And you can see right there, it says outlast a lifetime. And on the other side, has some sort of marking there. Right there, it says lifeguarded. And then these two nubs are how you would connect the pipe and fitting together. So let's see, you had a fitting here. You could take a chamfered pipe or another fitting. You'd have to chamfer the pipe so it fit in the fitting. And then you would use the tabs on the fitting to pound the joint together to make a watertight connection. You just use friction connections. There's no glue or anything that people use to connect this. Now I have another elbow exactly like it. And it's this one here. It was made by Lime Material. Lime Material was founded in Milwaukee, Wisconsin around 1910. And this is the logo they used. They made all sorts of stuff. They even made street lights. I can see how this one is exactly the same. And on the other side, this is Permaline, 4 inch 90. Inside, this is the end that I go into another fitting. And this is the hub. Now, if you look closely, you can see lines on the inside. And that is how this fitting was made. There'd be a mold that would go together, inject the material into the mold, and then after it cool, the mold would come apart and drop the fitting out. So those lines inside are from the mold going together. Now the next fitting 
is a four inch thin wall ABS coupling. Thin wall ABS is used a lot for pressure applications, but they also made a thin wall ABS for sewer and drain. Now this is a four inch sewer and drain fitting. And right here, it says GSR Sun Valley, California. And they started marking their fittings of GSR around the late 60s, before that they marked them with Sloan. Now you can see, there's just some more information there, nothing too important. On the other side, there's no information. That on the other side is a stop where the pipe would stop. It's a very simple fitting, but they stopped making this thin wall ABS around the early 1980s. The closest thing to it is styrene, which is usually white. Now the last fitting is just a Genova PVC fitting. It's a spigot adapter. So it's basically like a cast iron hub, but made out of PVC. This end would go into cast iron, and then this end would glue into PVC. Right there, it says Genova. Genova was founded in 1962, and they're still around. Right there, it says NSF DWV. Now, they mark NSF in capital letters. They changed that around the mid-70s. PVC, UPC. Not many companies put UPC in their fittings anymore. And then that's the part number. I can guarantee that the part number is still the exact same. Genova fittings haven't changed a whole lot since the 70s.